ship with a flaky crew. Well, hey, we don't good. talk about money that much because money is considered uh, it's kind of a laissez-faire kind of thing. But money oh. is a real figure in this uh, equation. And some of you could do better, I'm sure. Some of you could do at all, I'm sure. And uh, not have this thing be a burden and a, a, a threat. It's really kind of a threat around certain people. So a few of us have met uh, some officers, super luminaries and rude mechanicals such as myself. Um, and uh, we're all uh, in agreement that one, we've got to patch this leak. And two, it would be nice to um, start another, a separate fund for those who are capable who would like to commit on a monthly basis. So I'll say this again on Friday night, but this is a group and, and don't forget eBay or whatever it is, PayPal. And uh, it's got to be worth something to you because you come here on Friday night rather than be anywhere else. Did you say eBay? <laughs> don't, yeah, try and find the weakest part and then make a joke. Come That's on. what I always do, so it's, it's cool. But no, PayPal, mm -hmm. and I'm serious. You guys got to think about this. For, what has this been worth to you? The other, uh, thank Not you so much. Yeah, that. Hmm? The other thing you can do is uh, I don't I don't know how the other banks and credit unions are, but if you're a member of Schools First, uh, they have you know on the website you can go and uh, they'll cut a check. Uh, you can pay a bill and oh, just set well, it monthly. Uh, can we talk about the details later? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I just want to say that, that people do already support on a monthly basis. Some in, in that, but it, it doesn't cover the people who don't pay at all or pay very, very little. And just because you don't go doesn't mean you don't need to support, guys. What? You're going to pay for the one Friday night you're here and not for the three Friday nights you're not? Really? Really? Sorry, that's right. why David is getting the message and not I. Yeah, He's thank much you. Nicer. Well, I look forward to contributing more. I just got a job. I'm happy to hear that. Hey. Pierre. Uh, hi. Um, I uh, have had a. I had a dream. <laughs> and I'm only going to share one of them. Would you mind uh, taking a few minutes out of your visit here today? Welcome, by the way. It's nice to see you. Yeah, I got caught up in LA traffic. Did Jesus. You me that? It didn't move. Did you get your phone? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, this is the wrong June? dream. Okay. Uh, this is like the... I think, I think that's, that's mine. Yeah. My oh, okay. Okay, here. I think that's mine. <laughs> your other one. Yeah. Green? Green? I didn't get that one. Green? I don't have a green. Uh, we're having a little problem. Could you share? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Because uh, we're getting around to here. Uh, we need to share. Julie, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'd also like to make a quick comment uh, regarding camera. Um, if anybody wants to help, a, a couple people have already volunteered. As you know, when you're, when you're standing behind the camera, it's harder to be part of the dialogue. So if we had a team of people that, you know, I'll do it 20 minutes, you do it 20, or I'll do it today, you do it tomorrow, let me know and I'll we'll show you. It's pretty simple to do it. And we'd all appreciate it. Thank you. I have two dreams, but I, I decided to do the shorter one out of courtesy. 13 or 14? Uh, the 14th. The 13th is just on and on and on and on and on. Oh yeah, we should look at that. Uh,
want to read it? Okay. I am teaching a class, and the most obnoxious student I ever had is present. There is not a moment when he's not doing something not on task, when he's not doing something distracting to the progress of the class, nothing that does not demand special attention. I look over there, and he's drawing a colorful picture on his desk. He has water, and his explanation is that he will pour water on the picture to make a watercolor. Watercolor. I have to go over and dismantle that. I'm trying to teach a unit on sequence of tenses, the primary and secondary sequence of the subductive mood. The rest of the students are that there are quite a few, are very attentive. He is making he is taking a makeup test, and I look and see that he is doing yet another obnoxious attention grabbing strategy. I take him to the back and find him a seat. It's kind of messy back there, it's quite a large old classroom. I clear a place and put him in a seat. As I'm walking away, he moves up two seats. He starts removing the stuff from, from the chair and making a big scene. I just want him to sit down. This is the last incident because there has been about five in the dream and they all have great detail and they all have the same outcome. I end up screaming at him. I couldn't remember all these. I tell him finally that you are the most dysfunctional, disruptive, waste of time for the class student I have ever had. As I'm walking back to the class, I see that the other students have turned around and have been watching me say this. A couple of students along the aisle are happy, and I say, give me five, give me five. And they're all smiling because I told this kid off. I think I called him a pain in the ass at one point. That kind of needed to be said. Just, just as I return to the front of the class, the bell rings, and so I kind of shout at them. Will everybody please read 20, chapter 29, the sequence of tenses, if you're interested and we'll come back and talk about this tomorrow. I have a feeling that some of the students want to. They come back and make sure they have the assignment correct, and I see they're interested. There is no more mention of the obnoxious student as the bell has rung. Great. What do you make of it? Well, I decided that I would never give a makeup test in class again when I woke up. Okay. So I got a real good insight into classroom management. Mm -hmm. It's not how you run a class. No. And, and I had major problems because of that in the past. So. Mm. Uh, by the way, I'm thinking about going back and doing some substituting. Just yeah. not nominal. You know. oh. um, well, I don't, you know, I have trouble paying attention. My mind wanders very quickly and fast and wide. Uh, and so I, I'm not... By the way, that's not an evidence in the dream. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, it's not an evidence, is it? No, it isn't. No, it so, isn't. so we uh, just I, dismiss I trying that. To, trying to figure out what the message was. Is it talking to me about my issues? No. no. Uh, yeah, I'm, I have always thought, put the classroom first. And to have a, an individual like this, you know, it took me a while to hone it down to the five kids in the class who mess it up, and then the 29 or 30 kids in the class who are there waiting for this drama to get over. And so um, I really am an advocate for the greater good. And something like this has been plaguing me for oh. a long time. Success or failure? Well, I think it's a success. Yeah. I think, uh, and everybody, uh, many of the students share in that perception. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I could focus on the distracting kids, but what's really there is that I'm doing some pretty damn sophisticated stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where's, and the students are into it. Yeah. Where's the problem, though, in the dream? I think it's in losing my temper. No. No? Calling him an ass. Pain, yeah. um. No. It's a beautiful dream, first of all. You know, it captures everything very neatly. Mm. Where's the problem? <coughs> yeah, some people would like to find my problem. May I ask you then uh, just one sentence? I have to go over and dismantle that. Got that scene in the dream? <coughs> well, that's where he wins. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's. It's it's like he's made uh, a What's scene. that like at that moment? You go over and dismantle it. What's it, It's incredibly frustrating, and my frustration is in my motions and in my the way I the way I feel in my arms of trying to muscle this thing back into shape. Yeah. Uh, it blocked you from action. That state of mind blocked you from acting. Notice what it took for you to act. It had to reach a very high point of frustration, didn't yeah. it? That's the problem. When you saw, you didn't act. And the dream is, what are the implications of that moment? You mean didn't act in the sense that I Usually, you know, when I got to the point in my career where I could finally point to it, describe it, and not have to do anything about yeah. it, and let the person deal with the implications yeah. so without that, me getting off. Yeah. So At that point, then, the state of mind you were in blocked anything of all alternatives. Therefore, is that state of mind the problem? That whenever you're in it, it, you lose the ability. When I have to get physically involved, you mean? Yeah, yeah. At, at that point, would not have been the clearest and the simplest moment to act. And by, by acting, you mean? Deal with him and what he's doing out of the class. But what do you think of the word toleration? at that moment. Are you tolerating something that you know? It's going to continue, yeah, and it continued through yeah, the dream. Yeah, yeah. And every time it was ad hoc, it wasn't dealing with the issue, but it was dealing with the particular incident. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. So that state of mind is very interesting. You saw what he was doing, you understood it, you went over there to dismantle it. That state of mind that you just described is costing you. All having to tolerate the increasing unfoldment of all the negativities and the hostilities. And it's an interesting state, isn't it? You're at that moment, you know what to do, you don't do it, you're frustrated, you're all physically involved. If you wanted to push this dream, I'd have to ask you, what's the history of that state of mind? Um, when a notion comes up, I act in the moment to fix that. But do not deal with the situation that you see, which is this disruptive behavior. Yeah. Right. So that state of mind blocked you from looking at all other alternatives, didn't it? Therefore, it's interesting to know what's the history of that. What do we call it? The moment of put a name on it. That emotional state. Engagement. It's like Engagement. engagement. Whatever like name going you to give, battle. Yeah. Whatever name you give it. The question would be, what's the history of that state of mind in your life? Because you see, you're very effective in dealing with it, but look what you have to tolerate, and you also risk your own profession. By calling the guy a name, etc., you know. It is a success, you see, but it's a costly success, isn't it? Well, let me just say, I feel like I'm in a, a successful environment, but I'm not benefiting from it because I get in this kind of... Yeah, activity. so therefore, what, what's the history of that state of mind that blocked all alternatives? Um, so if you wanted to explore it, that's where we would have to go. So the steps would be, again, 
What was it like at the moment when you keep going over there to dismantle it? I just describe that and then talk about the history of it and where you may have learned to imitate someone in a kindred spirit. Mm -hmm. That would be where you have to go. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know how it would... It's, it's when I have to physically go fix a particular thing rather than... See, at that moment, what are you doing? What name could we put on when you went over there to dismantle it? Like, well, it seems like busy work in a way. It, busy work. Busy work. Good. See, that fits the emotional state, yeah. right? Then you do the old, the strategy. Once you're in that emotional state, is busy work. Yes. Yeah. Dealing, uh, you know, physically doing everything to remove what appears to be to yeah. clean up the situation. Yeah, appears to be right. Mm -hmm. So we would want to know, would we not? What's the source of that? Where does it go? What's the history of that? How much have you paid for that state of mind in the past? Is it worth looking at, challenging, and perhaps getting rid of? I think I think there's some history there. I think there's some scenes that I haven't looked at. Mm -hmm. Messy scenes. Maybe even early childhood scenes. Training scenes. Mm -hmm. Not, they're not at the tip of my tongue, but there, I feel like there's been times when, you know, you, you, they rub your nose in it. Hmm. So it would be your choice whether you want to do an exploration. Well, I, 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 I'm going to have to watch. Okay. We, we can do it privately sometime. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Lovely Appreciate dream, it. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to mention that there's an air conditioning unit behind us oh. over here. I'm going to turn that off. Good. And you're speaking really quietly. Oh, I didn't know that. Thank you. Well, I, you, you kind of. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought I was talking very loud. Oh. No. Nope. Hey. That's a ship misperception. <laughs> it, oh. The problem with that, you know, I, I know the reason for that. Uh, I ran out of coffee. Oh. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I have another one, but uh, I would defer to anybody. Okay, fair enough. Julie, did you have one? Right, right. This, 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 no, this isn't worth it. Okay. Hey, how are you? Did you have a dream, Julie? Um, All right. Pierre, you know, you had mentioned to me that I should look at that past dream again. Oh, yes. I brought it yeah. again. Good. But I'm not... Do you have an idea of what's where you want to look? Uh, I would certainly be willing to engage in that idea. Do you have napkins here? Here. Yeah. I'll do that. Here. Not new cell phone. There, there it is. That's a napkin. Right, a right. Good, good napkin, uh, too. Hey, what'd you think of the story about the, the cell phone? Incredible. I know. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible story. <laughs> Very yeah, nice looks, people on the yeah, phone, too. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, How interesting. Well, thank you, Mary. Oh, cool. Does somebody yeah. have a copy of my dream? <laughs> Is it the one from last week? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to go over that again? Yeah, I'll make copy. Is this just a wolf from a long three hour sleep? No. No, yes. I think. Is that mine? I think that's mine. Okay. This is the battlefield. No, this is Julie. It's oh. the one after, but it's the one after that. Saturday afternoon. I want it. You want to tell the story while we're no, waiting? No, no, no. Let Nancy. Oh, let Nancy. Regina. Regina. Oh, I will. 
Okay. Go ahead. Since we're in an inter, uh, for an intermission, Pierre lost his phone about a week ago, and oh. he Nancy didn't oh, was that the same go and oh. correct it for a while, and I was trying to call him yesterday, and I figured maybe he's sitting somewhere in the house, and so I said, well, I'll keep calling. I'll call, call, call. Finally, there was this little lady answer. Hello? <laughs> hello? I'm going, hello? <laughs> hello? And she couldn't understand English. So finally, uh, I said, well, okay, I must have the wrong number. So I hung up, I called back again, and I got the same lady. And so I go quickly and look up Pierre's phone number and I said, I'm calling the right number. So I say, hello, uh, is this the right phone? Is this the number and blah, blah, And she said, hello. I don't know. And so somebody answered the phone and said, oh, she found this phone. Oh on the street well it wasn't clear that story this is taking about a half hour of time mm. basically they found this lady had found Pierre's phone on the street up in Long Beach and uh, just had it and I called it and so they said I could go pick it up and I said well I'll tell Nancy and they gave me the dress and you have to understand this is very very broken English Wow. And they were Cambodians. Oh, wow. So I said, do you happen to know Seon? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, no. and? They said, no, no, no Seon. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm not going to get through this way. So I said, I said, well, I'll just let Seon talk to him. And he doesn't know Cambodian, I asked him. So anyway, they said, you can pick it up anytime. And so I told Nancy, and they got their phone back. Oh, good. And, they, and the people were oh, this oh, super nice, super pleasant. Sweetest people. <laughs> and gave you your phone back. Well, that must mean you got to keep one. that phone. I was just about ready to cancel, and I thought we'd find yeah. Gina with her persistence. Just... Just... Oh, I'm trying to something else, so. Wow. <clears throat> this story. It probably didn't quite, no. <laughs> the poor woman, you know. <laughs> it was the grandma. The grandma, okay. Far out. So that was the story. Yeah. Now, this is... Uh... Julie. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> Thank the lady. I'm trying to see you. See here because I can't do this one. Now, what's ideal about this <coughs> is that she had this dream, we had a talk, and now she wants to talk about the dream. Hey. No. What? How much? How much? attention should you give to a dream after you've had it second after you've had it and had it reviewed and you have reflected upon it what do you do with it forget it file it away but the dream has evidence of knowing you better than you know yourself A dream knows your problems and it can express it most brilliantly in the briefest set of terms. Why doesn't it become an object of contemplation? Really? You're missing something. I've had dreams I've meditated on for 50 years. So let me ask Julie, why, what is it about this that you'd like to talk about once more? Well, um, 
So this is unusual. No one has done this before. Yeah, we have. So I'm interested in knowing. Mm. Well, in a way, um, I didn't even deal with the dream last time because last time I had mentioned what I had done the previous day and looked at the state of mind I was in the previous day and um, it had that element of um, neglecting myself and so that theme is in this classroom part for example uh, where I'm <laughs> neglecting the, the classroom and um, so that part with the classroom really bothers me that I'm so neglectful of it and because um, that's the first part which then leads to my being driven over to <coughs> this other office and um, and I'm saying so it's late and it's also way past time it's just late so um, it bothers me that I'm it, this is a terrible situation to be in with a class and I don't know how to relate that to well I mean I I can relate it to my preparation now for my class which begins in a couple of weeks. I'm neglecting my preparation for the class. So uh, the question is to what does that what is its origin? What, what is it that the dream is saying about that that we can look at and look at the origin of that kind of problem? wherever you go in the dream. Like okay. you singled out that one sentence in the third paragraph. In the process I fall asleep? It's, uh, it's late. Oh, yeah, it's late. Right? You singled that out a moment ago. Yeah. Yeah. How does that fit the very theme of the dream? as we explored it last week and still can look at it again now. Well, that theme is part of the neglect because it's like, what, is, what is the word, what's behind the word neglect? What, what, what avoiding. See, see, that's a consequence of something. A consequence right. of what? I'm avoiding dealing In, with Pardon it. me. I'm not asking you a theoretical question. Mm -hmm. In the dream. Do you recall what we singled out as a, a central motif in that dream and last week? Yeah, being in the position of the driver but not being in the control. Thank you. How does that fit that third paragraph that you just read? That it's just late which is why he's driving me over there are you are you allowing someone else right are you in the driver's seat someone else is in the driver's seat is that right right so it's picking up the same thing that you're not come on finish the sentence I'm not in control. Yeah, someone else is. Yeah. Same thing. How does that fit in the last paragraph so that you're puzzled about? Well, 
Well, it's 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 near the end of the class, so it's late in terms of the class, and I'm not in control. I've fallen asleep. That's right. Although I'm in the position same of same thing, the head of the class, like I'm the teacher, but, but I'm not functioning like same a thing. teacher. So is it the same theme that then is current yeah. in the last paragraph? Mm -hmm. So look here, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Did you review this dream before you came to ask about it today? A little bit. Uh, I don't know what that means, a little it bit. It means I read it over a couple of times. But I, did you spend any time on that paragraph and looking for it in terms of what we just just now? No. What were you doing when you were reading it then? Were you in the driver's seat? What were you, come on. What yeah. were you, what kind of reading were you doing if you read it three, three or so times and didn't make that connection? which came to you rather quickly right now. Yeah. Well, it's like I'm going over the words, but just not engaged. You same know, not thing. Look here. Seeing. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not engaged. What is that like? Describe yeah. that state of mind. Not being engaged? Yeah, 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 yeah. Aye. Well. You're going over something several times in your you're not engaged in it. What's your set like? Go ahead. How does it hit you physically? <coughs> uh, it's kind of like holding my breath. More. Like I'm just... Notice the way you moved your hand and where you moved it. Yeah, it's like I can't... Um, can't relax into it and... Yeah, see? see. That's very important. Yeah. Wait a minute. Why not? Uh, forget that, okay? Say it again. What, what is it like? Like I can't relax into can't it. Can't relax into it. You got the words? Can't yeah. relax into it. Very, very, very well chosen word. Yeah. 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 Like sitting. Yeah. But yeah. 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 Uh, uh, by the way, that does something to you, doesn't it? Yeah. Just now to talk about it. You're in the state now. If you care yeah. to do it, where does it go? Where well, it seems it? like it's vulnerable. Yes. Oh, yes. If I yes. Relax into it. And uh, and walked into that, that expression. Hold on to it because that puts you in the state, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, where does it come from in your own past? Uh, I don't know, but it seems like my mother would, like, interrupt us if we ever got really focused into something. Yeah, yeah, see, it's a prohibition, isn't it? Yeah. She doesn't want you to get into that state. So... So she has to impose some kind of a restrictive measure on you. So it's you. like I feel like I, I can only re totally relax if I'm alone. If there's nobody around yeah, me. Yeah, then it's safe. Then it's safe. <clears throat> yeah. So then I can't really get, get into, into anything it. unless I go home. Yeah, and, and, and make sure. And then I sure. set up a comfortable situation. Right, then I right. fall absolutely. asleep. And then you fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. That's right. No, no, that's yeah. right. And s sleep is sacred in your home then. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. If people were sleeping, you didn't bother them. See? Yet. Right. That's, that's an true. escape. Yeah. Say, uh, <clears throat> got a scene where your mother did that? Anything at all will do. Well, when I was playing the piano. Okay, what happened? I was totally into it. Then she'd come over. She'd come over and say, don't play that music. Just play Christian music. Just play, don't don't play like that. I don't know, she just was in a flurry. She got into a flurry. Yeah. Uh, talk about flurry, that flurry she gets into. Well, she was like alive. And she came alive. Yeah. 
Hey, sh that got her alive. She came running out of the kitchen with her apron and Hey, on she, and <laughs> she saw you. She, she heard me. She heard you. She heard me. Hey, otherwise, what was she in? Her own world. She was world. quiet. She was in her own world, just quiet. Yeah. <clears throat> but that did it. <clears throat> yeah. So she showed what she felt at that moment, thought. Don't yeah. get into that kind of music. Right. She's not talking about the music. She's talking about the state of mind. State of mind. Yeah, Ooh. that was the state of mind that was. And the Christian yeah. music must be safe. Yeah. Is it? Was it? Well, that's what she played. When it was you long and drawn out and, and a lot of chords and heavy and. But it avoids that state, doesn't it? Right. Right. So she's teaching you at that much. She's a teacher. She's teaching you. Don't get yeah. into that state of mind. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Say, is it likely you could find other situations where she did that to you? When you were in that state, she saw it? What would she do? You got a good one. What was it? I don't know. Wait, wait a minute. I, I think you... Let's see. Hmm. Boy. Go ahead. I mean, I just realized, I mean... You know, I, w I would wait till everybody went to bed before I would start doing anything for myself. That's why we're interested in what did she do when you did something for yourself right. before you decided to make that great decision that I'm not going to show that state of mind in front of anyone in this house. So you have to go for an earlier scene, don't you? Oh, earlier, okay. Hmm. Earlier. Anyone, mm. any will do. Watch anything that you remember will fit. Just take one of, just at random, take a scene, early scene with the mother. <coughs> well, I remember I broke my arm. Okay, do it. Okay, there you are. Well, I was on the, at school. Okay. But I was on the slide, I was getting up on the slide to go down, and my tennis shoe caught on the top, and I just went over what, the What edge. happened? My tennis shoe got caught on the top. Uh, why did it get caught on the top? Because I was hurrying, going fast. Oh, I just wondered whether that fit. Well, I was totally into it. No, I meant, is there anything about this, that tennis shoe that you recall? Hmm. I just wondered whether it fit or not, that's all. Okay, yeah, I don't know if this is a good scene. Cause you know, I broke my arm and then I had to go to the nurse's office and then okay, she had to it's come. It's to okay, there you're going up. What happened? Well, I just went over the edge of the slide. Yeah. And I fell on my arm and yeah. broke it. Okay, let's go from there. What so happened? So I went to the nurse's office. Good. And they called my mother. And? And she had to come. She had to come. Had to come. So I cried when she came because it was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You have to come. I'm disrupted your day. See, See you're, you're in the driver's seat. She had to come. How was that driver's seat? You were in charge. You were in a situation where she had to come. Right. Had to Had come. to, right. What do you see about that? Because it's you so tell weird. me well, why, why were it was you... so weird. Would you tell me about the state that got you into? I was so... Go ahead. Well, it was always like this. Whenever she had to come, it was like, I'm so sorry. I've yeah. See? You have to come for me. Yeah. See, it's already there. You have to come for me. Yeah, the focus is not on me. It's on her. Yeah. For having to yeah. disrupt her day. Yeah, yeah. You go back to it now. Come on. Uh, at that time, who is calling the shots? 
I was calling the shots. You're in the driver's seat. True. True. And you're apologizing for what? For needing her. For being in the driver's seat. Yeah, it is like that. For being in the yeah, for having that much power. To that have that I could much power. Get her. Oh, to, to get come. her. Ooh. Because she would have got, had to have driven over, and she didn't. She didn't make it known that she could drive unless there was a real emergency. Oh, so you had to break through that phony game of hers that she's incompetent. Right. That's power, isn't it? Right. And therefore, when she came, what was it like? You had to do what? It was quite a state of mind I got into at that time. I mean, yeah. first of all, there was the apologies and the yeah. kind of crying. Yeah. You didn't cry before. No. Now you're crying. But after that, it was like just... What? A blank. Of There's course. Nothing I could it's say all, to it's her. finished. It's not a blank. It, the rest doesn't have any meaning. This has meaning. The whole thing was just to get her. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> Is that great? Let's finish it. Come on. I mean, the, after the that. Way, was... The way to wake up mother yeah. and to get her to attend to you, finish it. It was always a physical emergency yeah. of some sort. Yeah. You had to be sick. Yeah, that's called love. Right. You had to be sick or dysfunctional. Right, right. What do you think of that? Isn't that a great way of being? Wouldn't you recommend it for other people? Well, I used it a lot. All I had to do was wake up in the morning and say, Mom, I don't feel good. And she'd say, okay, go stay Okay. Home. Yeah, you used it from that point on. Yeah. She oh, knew you God. used it from that point on. Right. It's a game you both play. But then I'd stay home and she'd say, okay, do some ironing now. And I'd iron. Oh, that's when you did, all, that's when you did her work. Her work for her when I was So sick. you became her? Her sick ironer. <laughs> Come on now. Ironic. Right? Yeah, it was a it was like a game. We were just pretending I was sick. Yeah. So yeah, you've stay. been pretending you've been sick since then. That's yeah, the like game. A pretense of not being in the driver's seat is right. pretending that you're incompetent, like your mother. Right, right, right. Right. Is that right? Yeah, that's the yeah. yeah. Isn't it time to, uh, what? Be competent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's just a game. It was an important game because it let her play mother at that time. Otherwise, she'd ignore you. Right? I mean, how when much I'm attention? In Hobbiton, she gets to play mother. Yeah, under that circumstance, that's the only time she played mother. So you had to give her an occasion to play what? To play the driver. Yeah, right, right, right. You got the language. It fits, doesn't it? Yeah. Now look at the dream for a moment. Okay. Look at that. Look at that magnificent, right? Third line. Actually, it's like I'm in the driver's seat, but someone else is driving. Hey, one sentence grabbed everything in your life, right? Into a metaphor. Right. Right? With an amazing, right, what? Come on. Accuracy? Profound insight. Cast your whole life in a dream that you can benefit from. Yeah. Right. See? Dreams are worth reflecting on, okay?
It's an immense, it's a staggering source of insight. Yeah. Can't get anywhere else. Agree? Yeah. Therefore, the hell with meditating on anything else. Meditate on your dreams, man. They, they have a vast profundity, universality for yourself. Captures everything. Right? Now what are you going to do with it? Shoot. Don't lose it. Put it on, hey, put it on your uh, refrigerator door. <laughs> Right? And don't go by without reading it. What, what does it take to read? I could have it put on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of shirts and I'll just wear them all the time. <laughs> Wait, to put it on a shirt, print it on. No, no, Isn't someone else's so shirt. Yeah. Everybody else's shirt. Yeah, yeah because you're not going to see herself. So you can read it. <laughs> so she can see it. This is why I'm incompetent, so I can give her a chance to pretend like she's a... Yeah, isn't that wonderful? Shit. Sh uh, shit, yes, it is. It's terrible. Yeah, it is. That's called raising your child. Into the family game. Is that right, Bobby? Curious? Yeah, it's curious. Yeah. Now, I have a thought that Barbara has a question. Uh, no, I don't. I actually was working on something and listening, but um, it's something that I've been puzzled about in my own psyche. Hmm. And so that's what I was. Okay. Looking at. So it's and a pretense. I would like to talk to you about some time, either today, at this moment, or later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you come and see her? Oh my gosh. So this incompetence is just a pretense. Right! <laughs> You're in the driver's seat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Shoot. And can you see it everywhere? Next up, come on. Yeah. Everywhere. It covers all of the key spots that yeah. bug you. Right, good. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Thanks. Mm. Well, what do you guys want to talk about? I don't know, Barbara offered something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she Barbara did. offered something <laughs> for Psyche. Well, I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely up for it. Um, so, it uh, has... Yeah, you'd like me to sit you over You have there, to sit over where I am. Yeah, yeah, I got Your choice. Oh, my choice? I'm Your fine choice. here. Yeah, I'll leave better. That's yeah, okay, yeah, I'm loud. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... So this, this, um, the situation is, I recently, as you know, returned to cello lessons. And um, I have, so, and that means I go every week to a 30 minute, 45 minute cello lesson. Boy, they seem like they come day after day, right? Okay, but in the course of this cello lesson, mm -hmm. I noticed that in practicing, in the cello, you don't, you have to, um, you have to put your finger down on exactly the correct point to get the pitch correct. So I noticed that I would find the place and let go completely. So I had no memory of where it was, right? And I noticed that, that I started... That's wonderful, isn't that, it? And that's, and that's, I noticed that I do that in conversations and that my mother did that with me. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm calling. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, so she would say to me, how did your day go? Or how is such and such? And the minute I started to talk about it, she'd actually do this. And like, stare off. And she wasn't listening from that point on. From the moment I started. I, I don't understand. What, in terms of what you know, what did that communicate? That she really didn't care. 
you know, that she had no interest, that it was some kind of... But she had an interest in coming over and showing that state of mind. Yes, yes. And, um... That she could have stayed wherever she was. Yes. So what is it Why about it? What is it about it that she chose to show up and finish it? Chose to show up and let me know how meaningless I was to her. You know, that she really, really, really didn't care. You know, that um, it seemed like that was really important, that she wanted to show me again and again that she had no interest. Say, uh, uh, how did she show that she did like anything that you did. Did like anything that I did. Or something that you did she liked. Um, my mother liking something I did. That's, that's a tough one. <laughs> the two don't go together. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't know that I can come up with anything. Um, How about when you did something for her? When I did something for her. Okay. My mother really liked it if I went with somebody else to do something they wanted to do, like one of my sisters. Oh. Like if one of my sisters would say, uh, I want to go to the mall. Then if my mother would want me to go with her, if I would go volunteer to go with my sister and accompany her, any of my sisters, that my mother liked. That what do you what do you make of that? What, what do you make of that as you reflect on it now? Well, it would seem then that she's really happy when I'm doing something for someone else. Uh, what would her role be if you didn't do it? Well, sh I don't know that anybody had to go with them. But she, if she wanted someone to go with them, she could. Yeah. Therefore. Therefore, in some ways, it was a double whammy because she was showing my sister that my she didn't care that much, right? Or she would have gone. Um, but therefore, sorry, I lost it. Lost the train. Okay. So what were you asking me? She lifted off. Just the consequences of that. What are the consequences? Well, I seems like I've spent my life waiting for an opportunity to go with them on one of their trips. Yeah, yeah. What, what name would you give for the, the job that she's giving you? What name would you give that know. she wants it's kind you of like to play? Being a pet. It was kind of like being a pet, a dog or something. More. Well, because I didn't. My sisters didn't particularly want me. They didn't ask that I go with them. So I wasn't really contributing to that yeah. journey. Yeah. I was wondering what metaphor you might use if someone were to ask you. Uh, well, I feel it was like when you have an imagined, you know, some children have imaginary dogs and they have like, they walk along with a leash and <laughs> there's nothing on the other end. That's kind of like what I feel the dog that isn't on the end of the mm. leash. Why do you think your mother was uh, disturbed by the state that you reached in your art? At, in other words, if you were to anticipate when she would do what she did, what would it be about that moment? Well, you know, it connects back to the time when I was um, building that thing at, out of Legos at my grandmother's house and I was completely involved in that task of building that those Legos. And my two sisters had ignored me and they were sitting over on the other side and they were doing something. But as I got more intensely into it, they got less intensely into what they were doing. And my mother came along and said, don't you think it's time that you let your sisters play with the Legos? Yeah. Right? So she like took it away from me. Uh, and that is very much like that lift. Yeah, up. what does that mean that she's getting you to avoid a certain state of mind. It must have been very threatening for her. And then there was a scene when I was five, or actually when I was three, when I wanted to read, and she, you know, I went in to find the books and got, oh, get the books, and boy, my mother came down on that like a, 
What do you like a warrior? She's see, just a what, what is it about that state that so disturbs her that she's willing to do that to her own daughter? You know, I, I mean, it looks to me, my first answer would be she doesn't want me to be, to be intensely into something that isn't the family is threatening to her. Oh. So she has a keen mind for excellence. <laughs> she wants to keep us from doing it. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. And see, that was... That threatens. Excellence threatens. That have to make room for it. Yeah, and, you know, when I was in sixth grade, I brought in a set and a report card that was all A's, one B plus. And she said, what about the B? <laughs> but she never said, good job, ever. Ever. And whenever I would say something like, hey, look, I did this, she'd say, all my children are average. Jesus. Oh, I didn't know you'd call her a liar. No, I would have liked to. That would have been probably better for my soul. Right? <laughs> At that moment, if yeah. you were to reveal the truth about what's going on, what would, would it do? Well, it would have been freeing. Yeah, but it would challenge her own game, oh, her whole world view. Absolutely. She was never that good of a. She was never that good of a student. She was. She got a degree in everything at a time when that wasn't so common. She got two degrees. Well, she did reach a certain level then. Yes. Beyond her average. But I've seen her transcripts, so yeah. I know she wasn't as good as yeah. she was. <laughs> what is this fear of excellence? Right, that that mm -hmm. that uh, that's pervasive, isn't it? It's pervasive. Wow. I think so. Right, Probably Jeff. My colleagues could attest to oh, that. Yeah. Hmm. But not at your home. Uh, no, actually, I was allowed to be excellent at a few things, but I wasn't allowed to practice doing it. So it kind of puts yeah. me in a little <laughs> issue of how to get good at something when you're not allowed to do it. Yeah, we have to be born there, right? Or, yeah, I know that. Interesting, isn't it? The yeah. ideal of excellence is uh, that, ooh, ah. <coughs> that was good. <coughs> but that's why in the game we're in. Whatever you're into, you have to go for excellence. Because it's going to surface whatever kind of problem you have, or you've been taught. Oh, pardon me, learned. Yeah. I've been trying to put into words the problems I've been encountering with the cello to the teacher. Because one problem is, they have this message on their website that says, all Soli students will practice an average of 30 minutes a day. Okay, she said, I'm the only person she's ever known to have actually read that. You know, that the kids don't read it. And I went in and said to her, you know, when I practice because you, when I practice for you and your requirements, the practice is really awful. I mean, it's not that I don't do it, I do it, but it's all very mechanical, it's very get this done, it's, I'm filled with anger. And I, I said, I really need to practice for myself. Yeah. My goals. Yes. And I don't think she's going to be able to to see that. Because I think she thinks that the students do what they do because they love her. She's a very, very committed teacher. And so, you know, if you tell her that they need to they need to love what they're doing with the cello, that that's the way they're going to Yeah, it's this, this strange love for everyone to be average. Yeah. She... She, though, she turns on a dime, like I said to her, you know, this this pitch business is coming under control. What I would really like to know is how to get my cello to sound not so crude, yeah. not so vulgar. And so she immediately went into like, well, let me tell you, let me see what I'm doing that makes, that gives my cello playing this beautiful quality. And then she, you know, we, we practiced it. I mean, she went right there analyze what she was doing, I could see what she was doing, talking about what she's doing, having me do it, so, and that really did help. So she is a very fine teacher, so, but, yeah. but I think that she won't get the kind of success that she could have if she can't communicate that her students need to do what they do from themselves.
So if you now go on with your cello uh -huh. and... It's for everything. It's like when I'm listening, like David was saying, he does, he's, he, you said you don't pay attention, that you lose attentiveness. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happens to me. I go into liftoff. I'm listening to you. You're reaching a conclusion. You're going to the conclusion. All of a sudden, oh, what a nice tree that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Mama Mama, Just like Mama right? Mama. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, isn't it strange so that, that all of our problems are imitative? We all imitate these early scenes. Mm. Uh, that's called love. <laughs> Imprinting. <laughs> Certain kind of love, isn't it? Mm -hmm think enough of someone to imitate them yeah my mother you know because she's showing what she really thinks at those moments and you go wow man is that where you are oh oh that's what you want me to be <laughs> now I know now I know what works in the family now I know a law a principle a dogma how to belong right now I belong Here's to the average man. Really? Oh, really. <laughs> Common sense. <laughs> right? The betrayal of the mind. Yeah. Are you, are you done? Hi! Hi, Hi I'm, I'm sorry. I'm joking. Yes, okay. I am. I'm done. Here, you said if we should reflect on our dream, how do we determine, like, not take it so literally? I know who to ask. <laughs> what happened to Julie? When we look at it, you know, it's like... Ah. We'll ask Julie. Julie uh, oh. Hey, Julie? Mm. How are you going to reflect on your dreams? Well, I'm going to uh, be in the... do some goals. Be the real driver. Be competent. Challenge the... And being in the driver's means what? To explain that to him. So I'm going to um, pursue a goal competently and see what happens. That'll be the way I, I challenge it. With But I, I think, I think uh, if I caught Seon's drift, I, I thought he had added something at the end of his question, which is, how do we explore our dreams not literally? Not literally. literally. What does that mean? Face value. Perhaps he means... Literally means what? I have a problem with that word. Yeah. What did you mean? Well, like <laughs> the dream that I had Wednesday night, and I was seeing that one individual that I shared last night that was being at his excellence, I think, but I took that as a reflection on me, well, not that I'm reflecting on it, but I took it as somebody I didn't like, like like his image was somebody that I didn't like, instead of see, see. I don't know if I'm... There it. isn't any way to do it, other than you're curious if there's a meaning and it's try to understand what the meaning is. That's reading. The Chinese have a great principle for learning. You can learn any book if you read it a hundred times. I don't think so. Right, right. Stay with it. Go over it again and again and again. That's practice. That's practice. That's what you're doing on the. Why do you? Why do you have to practice? Why do we have to practice meditating on a dream or shallow? What, what? What is practice? Well, practice is like reading the book a hundred times. Practice is doing it, right? Practice is doing it and doing it. And doing but you're doing. It's different. You're. What is practice? Like, wh why do you have to go over it and over it? Why? What is that? Like, let's call that practice. Why do you have to do that? In every field. Growth, development. You see more about it every time you do it. 
I don't know that that helps. It becomes I mean, a part with, of you. Uh, yeah, but, but <laughs> of course. Without but, practice, it won't be. Yeah, but, but you have does to that see answer the question? It. On. You're perfecting. That's the consequence of it. Oh, the consequence. Perfecting. What? Uh, uh, perfecting. Perfecting. A, a skill or... Is that or, the result of it? Well, if you keep practicing, yeah, you're okay. going to get better and better and better, which is growth or leads towards perfection. Yeah, but that's the consequence. Right? Yeah. So we're still after what is it. Well, every time you practice, you get to measure yourself relative to the ideal and see where you are, how far away you are from the ideal. So take that, put a name on that, what you just described, please. You get to see yourself respect to the ideal. Yeah, I now put a name on what it is that you are just describing. Why do you have to do that? So you see how like the ideal you are, how unlike? Yeah, that's true. That's the uh -huh. consequence. Yeah, yeah, okay. I just said, uh, the hell? That's your question. Well, it's well. <laughs> some usia. You need that for usia. Yeah, okay. To, uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. See that's how right. you can change your ways. That yeah. You shouldn't give up on the question just because we're slow thinkers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like practice. We like practice. So you understand we it. Well, we, like see, we like to go over and again and again. When Bill Gilbert gets on the flute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Now we're talking. What's it like, Bill? Not about chewing. Good. Like, I'll play one piece many, many times, but... Um, to me, the problem with the flute, and probably with the cello, is that I can't think about where my fingers go. It's too slow. In other words, I have to develop some sort of ear to it that I know how it should go. I mean, like you play a little yeah, Beethoven, and you know that's not the right note. I mean, you're not looking at the music, you just know it doesn't fit with what's going on. But there's a, there has to be an underlying feeling, which I never had when I was a kid, I played the flute uselessly, was that I could do it. I really can't do it. So, wait a minute, see, that's great, great. I see that I can do it. Yeah, I can, I can end up playing it the way I think it should be. You have to see that you can do it. That's right. You have to convince yourself that you can do it. That's right. And then when it gets tough, not to get up and leave. Right? You have to convince yourself that you can do it. You're, but that's by you're persuading yourself. Yeah. that you'll go through whatever difficulties to do it. If there weren't any difficulties, <laughs> no need for practice. No need for practice. But I like what Julie was saying, we shouldn't drop it, that we're moving towards an ideal. Yes, it is. See, we're see that you we're can watching do that ourselves idea. progress towards an ideal. That's absolutely right. That was a very fine insight. I, I just like keeping that active while we were yeah. talking about yeah. seeking that. Well, uh, Ingmar and I used to play a good amount of pool in a in a league, and I'd when you know you go out and somebody new, oh, I don't play pool, I, I'm terrible at it. I'm like, well, check it out. You know, they would believe that a shot is impossible, and I'm like, no, watch this. You know, and say one of us or somebody considerably better could do it. Well, I watched it for me is when I think a shot was impossible, and I watched somebody actually do it. That just expanded your horizon to say, right. what I thought was not possible is very much possible. Perhaps I can't do it, but I, if somebody else can, I could probably learn how to do so. Uh -huh. And that's a good start. And see? then, you know, like see in the, the pool example, you know, if you're cutting a shot, if you somebody you explain, hey, you actually did it too much or you did too little, you know, and somewhere in between that range of motion is where you want to be. So you're bringing in a great principle, which is that often you need someone who knows. Mm. Yeah. Which is, yeah, the function right? of... Because do you don't know, what is it you don't know? Well, see, I do that with electricity right now. I, <laughs> I imitate and I believe my bosses because I know that they know. I'm like, these guys know what they're doing and I'm, I'm getting good at it, but I still have to sit there and think about what I'm doing or I'll make mistakes that are costly. Costly. You got a couple of shocks? 
<laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but uh, sure. <laughs> but no, I mean, in terms of like wasting material, like if say if I'm running wires and I don't think about what I'm doing, I might run it around a whole damn building when they say, "Hey, genius." You could have gone right through this hole and done it in like 10 minutes and said you just wasted three hours and a whole bunch of money and your time that we paid you in material. And I go, oh shit, I didn't think about that. So it comes along. That's what, yeah. I believe the guys I know, right? I'll, uh, I'll have an idea and say I want to do it this way, but I want to ask what do you guys what do you think about my idea? And they'll say, oh, that's, that's our You have work. to believe, you have to believe they know. I believe, yeah. Then yeah. you're willing to be a student. Mm -hmm. So, one of my co-workers, I made the statement that I care considerably less about what he thinks now as versus some of the other guys. I'm like, he did me good so far, but now I need to unlearn some of the stuff I learned from mm -hmm. him because I can see where he limits himself. So I'm like, the other guys mm -hmm. don't go for that. They're like, he, we all see what he's doing to himself. He doesn't see it, but I'm like, I don't want to get stuck with him. I yeah. want to keep going more and more. Yeah. Or I'll do something else. Yeah. It's a, a higher level of sin. Right, right. right? It's he, always guy, a higher he's level got a of sin. Decent level. Like, I've had questions and he can answer them, but my, the other guys have a higher level than him. So, Mike, what do you guys think about what I'm doing? And the, yeah. Although, I often say you, that works but you could have done it better. Or, all right, that's pretty good, but do it a little different. And they'll give me, and I'll, I like to ask that why question. I'm like, I'll do it, but give me a why. Yes. And explain why is this better. Yeah. Everything you said, Barbara can understand in terms of her cello. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Well, my Or we can apply it in our own We're field, in, in our pursuit of excellence, yeah. right? Too many. But Why is that? <laughs> Why is it by listening and trying to understand something that is not in your field may help you? Well, I think the uh, the underlining principle of how to learn it is the, is similar or the same with all these things: so pool, electrical, cello, flute, whatever. Are you thinking that this might apply to dream work? That's okay. How amazing. That's just where I went. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we just finished dream work, and that's where I, excellence should be applied, yes. Right. That's just where I went myself. How interesting. Yeah. Excellence is a, is a little, literally, you know, a spiritual goal. Yep. You're showing yourself, and you're telling yourself you can know yourself by, know, by, by knowing something. <laughs> Like us, as she has a stick and a cat yeah. gun. Yeah, one she of those. She scratches it. Stick in a horse's hair. Horse's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Elevated. <laughs> Please I don't use, use plastic cat and guns. metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> plastic <laughs> and metal. Yeah. That goes tennis. Tennis is you. Yeah. Cello, horse hair. Cat guns. Think that's true in Greek? Save her cat. Studying Greek? Sure. Even in Greek? I'll be darned. So it's all the same. We're all doing the same differently. Mm -hmm. And one underlining dynamic is the same throughout. I like the idea of the what, the, ourselves. what do you want to do with the guy who's the pioneer, the first one into that field? There is nobody who knows prior to it. Ah. Now, granted, he'll do it and somebody else will jump in, and then eventually there will be a line and mm. you might get that guy that knows, but uh, he's in a, that individual is in a curious spot of nobody to ask. Uh. Yeah, how is it, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> With the pathologos and reading Play Doh. No but, one does but no it one that discovers way. their pathologist by reading a Platonic dialogue, do they? <laughs> <laughs> but that's all there was. <laughs> what is it? Like? I have to read the. I have to get to the Platonic dialogue. Right? <laughs> and Pathol when you get to it, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's amazingly beautiful. It's like a piece of listening to Beethoven. It's beautiful. Like yesterday, we were working on reading the third. Hypothesis and looking at the sudden 
and I said to myself, and we went back over the sec third hypothesis and I could see how the sudden was, like David pointed out, was all through, was like I could read the first part of it and he was setting up a whole set of questions and problems so that it could reach the second. And Pierre said, that's what it was. But I saw that while we were reading it, before Pierre said it, and I thought, cool! Good. <laughs> I'm on target. Ah, what is <laughs> I'm following. Yeah, what's that like? Oh, I was in heaven. I said, good, I'm, I'm here this morning. <laughs> yeah. I was really good. I thought, okay. Yes, it, it's, and every day we go into it and we're practicing. We've been into it for what, two years. So that's practice. But you, you, you're not, are you seeing something different? Differently? Oh, I'm seeing what's there. Yeah, but is that seeing? That's some, seeing. Something but different, differently? It, yes. Ah. Yes. It's just beautiful. Um, that's what we have to see. We have to see differently than what we normally see. Right. Right? Are you suggesting that living is an art? Yes. I, I'd suggest it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to capture it, but uh, yes, I'd suggest it. Uh, uh, the, the journey to know thyself is an art. Yeah. 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 But going back to Jeff's statement that what was what is it like for you know what would it, that person be like is the question you asked or the, what the pioneer of a the new pioneer field. the pioneer you don't have anybody to ask like hey right. uh, what should I do don't you think we should ask him oh, he's a pioneer of well he obviously is but I, he, I, I asked him this like a long time ago he didn't have an answer oh well maybe <laughs> we should ask him again oh, maybe Tesla. something's changed oh, yeah, Tesla. Yeah, he remembers that <laughs> Tesla is ready to go isn't it oh no I thought you said Esalen <laughs> no, it's years ago where uh, Eslon and we're having a chat about uh, his, Helen was there and we're talking about dentistry and how it took so many you know generations of people to come up with this and how it, we could have a master and I just sat there grinning because I like I came up I was like I'm about to get Pierre and Dharma combat for once <laughs> <laughs> only I, and, and I'm gonna like just defeat him in words and then I'm still gonna be in the same spot as I was before but I'm gonna do it. I'm paying attention. And well, Pierre makes this whole point of how this dentist, this master, it takes lifetimes to build it up. I'm like, awesome. Hey, Pierre, I heard uh, there's this thing called philosophical midwife. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, really? I heard there's a guy called a master, too, and you might be the only one. He's like, yeah, he already knows what's coming. I'm like, who was doing that before you? Oh, it's time for lunch. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess we could ask Pierre, yeah. what's it like to be the pioneer to do that? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. How, how did you do to be the pioneer into that? Fun. You can, Not fun. Well, that, I don't have a problem with that, but... Uh, <laughs> he said fun. Oh, fun. No. Fun. Well, that's doing whatever art you have with excellence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all want to be... Excellent. Having fun. Mm -hmm. okay. The freedom to have fun and being there. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like yeah. David plays the guitar. He has fun all the time. I heard from at three and four in the morning. He even built a whole studio so he could have more fun. Someday. All any time of the day. Sometime I'll give that all back to you, but not this week. Thank you. <laughs> nice. well, what is that? Well, I well, think performance. Play, I think a perform, performance is an important part of it. But I, there's, there's, there's so much, you know. And just like you can't, what I said, you could play that thing a hundred times and not life. You could live your whole life, yes, and not ever once in life get a message about what life is about. You need another art, yes. and that's why I agree with Lucia. I mean, Julie. <laughs> uh, that somehow in everything everybody's saying here, it seems to me that apart from what you do, there has to be a way to put that into words and bring that back to yourself yes. in a meaningful way. Very and 
that is not a part of music or of life or of any skill. Um, That's right. They, you know, every teacher should, in principle, finish it. Um, say, well, what did that do for you today? Yeah. Yeah. Help you integrate it into yeah. your life. Yeah. Whatever that word integrate means. Mm -hmm. And and so, I think there's only a few groups of people in the world who get that. Yeah. Uh, which is unfortunate. Unless you're in a land of fruits and nuts. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Narnia. <laughs> that's, that's what they call people living in Southern California. Oh, the land of fruits and nuts. <laughs> that's right. I, I was talking to somebody the other day and I mentioned that I was into Greek philosophy. And he said, what happened to the Greek world? Was it homosexuality that brought down the Greek world? And then it went into all kinds of Christianity and stuff. But, yeah, um, so that's what they've been taught. Yeah, but there was like they have to dig in. Uh, and but that, it just been really set that. me apart from what people are taught. Yeah. In that you, you, there's a way of reflecting outside of what you're doing on what you're doing. Yeah. And that's like you could practice it a hundred times yeah. and not be there. Yes. And become very rote and probably good at it, but. I think it makes a difference to be able to whatever it is we are doing. To be there. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. the first singing group I was in, Dave, one of the, the, they had two mottos, and one I don't really think too much of these days, but one was pretty good. They said, practice does not make perfect. Practice makes permanent. If you okay. practice poorly, you're going to be very good at doing something poorly. If you practice it rightly, then you will get good at doing it right. I think like, that so practice on its own does not. It's just dull. Not, if I you know. have a poor model of practice, you're going to do poorly at what you do. That's right. You're teaching yourself to do it poorly. I'm, I'm in the process <clears throat> of re, re, no, restarting with my hand it was, uh, mm -hmm. and being able to count because I have. Many of my teachers, my, all my teachers, I like really a lot, and that's a chance for me to be engaged and and do a little performance and stuff. But none of them have ever said, "Here is what you do to build on very strong basics." And if you're not looking at yourself doing that, so I play like Daddy Long Legs. No, you're supposed to be a little more, you know, like this. And and uh, I could play probably the cello. It's like I got that. But but, uh, but but the electric guitar is a little bit a little bit more relaxed and. Black. But I, I don't know what I'm saying. But it just—it seems that we have done the combat over teachers. Teachers don't know how to teach. I finally figured it out after about 20 years of my 28 years. But those kids don't know that they're in the classroom. They don't even know that they're in the classroom and that the classroom is a special and that how they how to integrate that into their lives. You yeah. got to know that you're here, yeah. and that's got to mean something. If you don't know you're here and if it doesn't mean anything, get out. Wait until you're old enough to figure it out. No, that won't work because nobody will. Life doesn't teach that. But uh, so I told them, you don't know why you're here. Your mom tell you to put on your shoes and get to work. And you, you know why? Is because there's no model outside on the campus of an educated man, a brass bronze, and it should be in front of every school. The educated man, and a goal and a purpose and a. There's no goal to public education. It's show up and run, and and there's no unity to it. In fact, there's, and probably even private schools to a great degree. It's just you know put on your shoes and go. But um, if there's no model of an educated man and what it takes for you to get there and what's keeping you from getting there, in spite of what's going on in all these classes and your you know ten year old physics book and all that stuff, um, there's going to be no. It's I'll walk out of there no better than when they came in. That's right. That's the goal of education. Mm -hmm. You know, when they designed our school system, they did it with that purpose in mind. Lord knows, I know it because I got in a hell of a lot of trouble for making fun of it. Our founders in the history of education realized that everybody came from a different culture. Now what are you going to do? Let's bore the hell out of them and that will indicate to them on a very personal level that your difference doesn't matter. Yeah. Therefore, no goals, no integration, just fill the head with nonsense. 
keep them in that state for 12 years, mm -hmm. they won't think anything of their being German, Irish, Jewish, black, whatever it is. Bore the hell out of them. Then they'll become an average man. Well, that's when the testing movement started, right? right? You, you tested them all. That's when the intelligence testing movement started, so you could put them no, all in no, different no, groups based on their test results. The Germans and the Italians and the whatever. Eliminated. And then you... Uh, yeah. Just one sign over David's uh, educated man statue. And it should be know thyself on all the schools. Yeah. Sounds good. Whatever, uh, whatever uh, if you can explain what that yeah. means. Well, yeah, but at least it's a beginning. Well. Well, <laughs> if you're going to go that route, you should make a sh shrine to Apollo. That too, we can do that. <laughs> Jeff has got it. And as we talk about this, I'm remembering a time that Pierre read to us a snippet of uh, Nietzsche. Oh, God. And my skin <laughs> just crawled because I had just been through an IEP uh, for a special ed kid. Um, and the principal had said to me, uh, I, had, I had presented some evidence that homework, lots of studies have now shown, kindergarten through, through high school, uh, has no measure, uh, has no correlation with success later in life. So let the kids go home and play. They've, been, they've already been in school all day. But Nietzsche, this principal was saying, well, what about accountability? What about just, even, even if the homework doesn't help them, don't they need to, to learn how to read? And Pierre read this thing about, uh, I forget which piece of Nietzsche it was, but it was all about uh, memory and making promises. Mm -hmm. But the promise, I, I thought about it later, is, is just the flip side of taking an order. And that's what we're training in schools. And, and my skin just crawled. That is really what's going on, is memorize and do what you're told and, and be accountable for it. <clears throat> That's well, I gotta go. Have you met uh, these two new people? No, I might. Yes, they got your book, by the way. Oh, yes, thank you so oh, very really much. Stuart Edley. Which uh, Stuart Edley. Ah. And internist. Sunny King. Yes. Good. An internist and a psychiatrist. Good. 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 Oh my God! I revealed too much. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have a signature. I want an autograph. Yeah. And since he has a pen, I want yours too. Yeah. 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 Get my return message. Yeah, I'm moving on. I'm going to finish this. 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 I'm going to finish this.